All right, here we go. Gonna let you know right off the bat, this video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build your online presence and run your business. Gonna talk about that a little later, but first, we have ourselves an actual Phase 4 MCU movie. Not a show, we've had shows. Movie, here we go. So Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings is the newest movie in the MCU and a Phase 4 movie. Oh wait, Black Widow. I kind of forgot. Okay, so this is the first Phase 4 movie that doesn't take place, you know, in the past. It's not a flashback movie. This one is actually taking place, uh, pushing it forward. And as you all know, I'm shit with names. I hope I pronounce his name correctly. It stars Simu Liu as Shang-Chi. Well, or Sean. And Sean is kind of a man-child. He hangs out with his friend, played by Aquafina, And they go to late night karaoke and get drunk on the weekends. They're valet parkers and they... They don't really know what to do with their lives. You know, they're adults who haven't figured it out. Totally relate. Then you find out Sean is Shang-Chi and Shang-Chi has a past. Shang-Chi's got skills. Shang-Chi's gonna have to face his destiny by facing his father and Shang-Chi's badass. Now I loved Simu Liu as Shang-Chi in this movie. I loved him as a lead. Dude is very charismatic, very relatable, you know, and that's, that's a hard thing to do here. Dude is completely badass, especially from where he comes from, but also, hey, Vulnerable, relatable, everyday guy. That's a tough balancing act. He did a great job in this movie. Also, Aquafina really does work in this movie and the MCU as a whole because the MCU is known for bringing a lot of humor into their movies. Sometimes to a fault, sometimes to a degree where you're like, everybody is funny in here and I don't feel like they're being real and you feel like you're in a comedy. Aquafina is that She's that outlet they can funnel the humor through and the comic relief moments through. Well, then again, Aquafina isn't the only comic relief character. There is another support character in this movie that's also there for comic relief. But for the dramatic moments that are happening that involve her or she's there for, she doesn't crack a joke and just ruin the moment. I appreciate that. Thank you for that. There were some times I was like, uh-oh, and the comedic character is going to ruin it in three, two, one. She didn't. Well, that's good news. Other movies in general, take notes on that. And also love Tony Leung as the Mandarin, like Mandarin Mulligan. He should be called Alpha Mandarin because he's the Mandarin before fake Mandarin. He's the Mandarin that's always been around. But for the sake of the MCU, he is a Mandarin Mulligan. Like they were like, oh, we did that wrong. Oops. Here's the real one. He's always been around. But I thought he was an anomaly among MCU movies. MCU movies usually have forgettable villains that exist just to have the good guys fight someone, because if you don't have a villain for the good guys to fight, you don't have an MCU movie. Present purple company accepted, and Loki. Well, let's be honest, the MCU's not known for their villains making the movie. It's just, it's happened in that anomalaic form. I thought he was a standout among MCU villains. It concentrates a lot on him. In fact, part of the heart of the movie has to do with him. He's a grieving widower and a father that's that's not unrelatable. <laughs> I like the fact that they gave that to the villain. I'm glad they had a threatening, menacing, intimidating, relatable villain. And the martial arts. And this is where we get to the part in this video where I talk about how my favorite things in this movie are the simplest things. When the simple things in this movie build to become overcomplicated, it's not as interesting to me as the simple versions of those things. Take the martial arts in this movie, for example. In the first act into some of the second act, the martial arts fights are just, they're great. They're top-notch entertainment, and it's a new energy, well, <laughs> It's new for the MCU. I'm not saying martial arts is like, whoa, what's this in cinema? That's new. I'm not saying that. I'm saying for the MCU, they've had to do something new for a while now to inject it with something that feels fresh. And in this movie, you see that with the martial arts fighting. And you feel like they've brought that to the MCU, that first fight on the bus. You're like, dude, this is actually... This is pretty fresh stuff. It just threw to what I like in martial arts fights in martial arts movies. Some slick martial arts, great camera work, great choreography, great cinematography. Then the movie kind of, it hits a lull. <laughs> it hits some downtime. And I think a lot of downtime. And there's a pretty large lull, you know, cause it, it has to do with family. And I'd love to say I was super attached to the family element. I kind of was. I was attached to the Mandarin's perspective of it. I don't know what that says about me. I guess when a movie gets me attached to the villain's perspective, I guess that's the only perspective I care about. But after all that excitement in the first act, the second act, you definitely do feel you're like, here's the downtime. But then in the last act, the fighting comes back, but it's not really, it's not the fighting I liked. It's not the fighting the movie pitched to me to get attached to. 
It's not really the martial arts fighting anymore. It's the whole battlefield, this big group versus this big group, and then you have other elements and rock out with your rings out and it's ring on ring combat. Later on in the movie, when you start seeing some extravagant weaponry and some CGI weaponry and the martial arts kind of took a back seat to the weaponry, which kind of took the forefront. And the great big CGI climax of this movie that took center stage and kind of pushed some of the characters into the background, it felt more MCU familiar. There was even build up with this masked character when Shang-Chi was training when he was a kid, you get the feeling this dude was a total dick. And there was no real payoff with that tension. I was like, but why'd you go the route you went? I don't know. I mean, the end looked great, I'm trying to keep it vague, but there was, some grand spectacle with the ending of this movie and it did look good. But that's what I mean when I say there are the simpler things in this movie, which I generally enjoyed most because the concepts are simple and they were kick-ass in execution. And I felt like all the craziness and the pomp and the size of the climax of this movie, I did, don't you be dirty in the comment section, stop it. But you know what I mean? Just like all the craziness that was going down in the climax, I felt cheapened the, the built tension between the hero and villain, which was, the father-son. I didn't feel the fulfillment I could have felt if it just stuck with them. Oh shoot, I almost forgot about his sister. I almost forgot to talk about his sister, which does kind of make sense for me. The group, the crew, is essentially uh, Shang-Chi, Aquafina's character, and Shang-Chi's sister. And someone gives his sister a weapon and says something along the lines of, it's time for you to come out from the shadows or something like that. I was like, I don't know that they knew how true that line was for the character because this entire movie, I felt like she was definitely in his shadow. Just kind of there. But who knows, maybe after a decade of her being in MCU movies, maybe then she will finally get her own standalone movie after DC finds success in it first, but only then. This movie does have a huge spiritual element, which is a huge part of the climax of this movie. But I felt like that got buried under the fact that it was all there, for a really good looking action sequence. Regardless of its flaws, I still enjoyed the movie, which I guess makes sense because some of the flaws in this movie are flaws that have been in other MCU movies that I've also enjoyed. This movie does what the MCU is known for doing, which is to provide you a reliably enjoyable, big blockbuster, big budget CGI fest of enjoyment. The movie I think has some pacing issues as seen in the second act when things just kind of not even kind of, very much slow down. <laughs> it's too long. I know I say that a lot, but I definitely you could shave 15 minutes at least off of this runtime. When the martial arts is in the forefront, it does feel like the MCU has a new energy that it's going for. By the end of the movie, you're like, oh, it feels like an MCU movie because they kind of fell into some of the MCU isms that the MCU does, flaws and all. But really, if I had to peg it, the element that made this movie for me, I'd say other than the martial arts when it was at the forefront, the Mandarin. I thought he was a great villain. I was pleasantly surprised to see an MCU villain stand out this much. I'll say I had an enjoyably good time, no alcohol required. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace sells over 200 top level domains. so You can find the perfect name for your website. Buying a domain from Squarespace is simple, no hidden fees. Between that and the fact that you can present videos from YouTube, Vimeo, and Animoto on your Squarespace site. And I always dig the fact that every design automatically comes with a unique mobile experience that matches the overall style of your website. They mean it when they say that the all-in-one platform to build your online presence and run your business. So go to squarespace.com for your free trial and when you're ready to fulfill your destiny. That was a bit dramatic. Click the link below, go to squarespace.com slash Jeremy Johns, get yourself 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain using promo code John. And thank you once again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I do appreciate it. All right, so Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. What? <laughs> this review is a bit early. I'll say, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Comment below, let me know for if you're watching this after you've seen the movie. In the meantime, what's a great martial arts flick that I can sink my teeth into? Bring on your recommendations. Whatever they are, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more. <laughs>